Now, one of the differences between DNA and RNA, and you think about, okay, molecularly, when we talked about nucleic acids, and we said that we have the sugar ribose, and RNA had that sugar ribose, but DNA was missing one of the oxygens um, from that hydroxyl group, and so we called it deoxyribose. Well, that's what comes into play when we talk about that DNA is stable and RNA is unstable. Because if you think about it, DNA has to remain intact because we need to copy it each time we want those cells to divide. We also need to maintain it so every time we want to make a protein that we can from it make RNA and then make the protein. So what happens is we keep the DNA as is. That's the master copy. We can make copies of that as RNA and it can go out and make proteins. Well, once we make the proteins we want, then we can pull apart that RNA back into its nucleotides and recycle them to make more RNA and so on. So the DNA, given its molecular structure, is more stable than what RNA is. Um, it's, for example, has anyone ever found DNA from um, extinct animals? Well, sure we have. But if we found RNA, no. Have we found proteins? Okay. Um, well, to some degree you could say yes, because we found some structures, fossils, things of that nature. But what's still in completely intact? Well, they're not functional. But we can find, I mean, it's kind of the premise of Jurassic Park, okay? The movie was kind of looking at some of those things. Now, one of the things we want to look at is we want to look at, well, maybe an example that works here. If you go work in a healthcare facility, very often the worst part about being hired at that facility is the fact that you have to go through that policy and procedure manual. And that policy and procedure manual, you have to read and initial that you've read everything so that they can say, whoever comes in to accredit them or ever there's legal issues, to say, hey, we taught them what to do. They read it, and here's where they initialed that they read it. Therefore, we did the training we were supposed to do. They just kind of screwed up. Well, very often in that policy and procedure manual, that policy and procedure manual, they don't want everybody to be able to change it because then they mess up everything down the line if they change one of the instructions to one of the procedures. So the master copy has to remain intact. So for example, one of the healthcare facilities um, that I worked at recently, the situation was they had a master copy on their intranet and it wasn't editable, it wasn't printable, it wasn't nothing. That had to stay intact and only certain people had permissions to be able to change that. Now, for the purposes of training, they would create copies of that material, but it would say, this is a copy, this is, okay. in other words, it wasn't the master copy. So, in other words, you've got this master policy and procedure manual from which you can make temporary copies to take out and use for training purposes. Those then get disposed of, and they can be identified as version 1.2.1, whatever, okay, whatever label you want to put on it, but they get changed but there's still that master copy there. And the same thing is true of our, of our DNA, regardless of the amount of RNA we make. Now, previously, I talked about the fact that we've got different types of RNA we have to deal with. And so you'll just have to distinguish them, but it's easy, because if you look in front of the RNA letters, you can see the little M, the little R, and the little T. The M standing for messenger RNA, which is unstable, which is going to allow us to then produce proteins from it. And it carries the coded message from DNA. We have ribosomal RNA that when we take this and combine it with proteins, we make, yes we do, we make ribosomes, which is the organelle of protein synthesis okay, that we're going to talk about. The transfer RNA is going to transfer amino acids for us to the site of protein synthesis. So think of them as trucks, that these trucks are going to pick up an amino acid that is specific to that transfer RNA molecule. And it's going to bring that amino acid in and drop it at the appropriate site so that we can then assemble the primary structure of that protein. So messenger RNA is going to take the message from DNA to the ribosome. Ribosomal RNA is going to make ribosomes. And transfer RNA is going to transfer amino acids like a trucking system to where we're going to, to the protein factories, which are the ribosomes. Now the graphic from your book represents all of these. Not only where do they come from, well, they're all to get the right information. They're all coded by your DNA. In other words, how do we know the sequence that the ribosomal RNA needs to have to work right? Well, the DNA has that instruction, those instructions. For the messenger RNA, well, the DNA has those instructions. Well, the transfer RNA, well, the DNA has those instructions. So all the instructions for making those nucleic acid strands are present in the DNA. 
And then we make or achieve the functionality of protein synthesis by making ribosomes with the ribosome RNA, by reading the messenger RNA at the ribosomes to produce the strands of polypeptides and proteins, and then the transfer RNA is going to be bringing in the appropriate amino acids um, that are going to build that protein correctly. So you can, hopefully you can kind of see the differences between those three types of RNA that we're going to deal with in the process.